want to welcome you to a deep dive into PostgreSQL indexing. Today we're going to talk about indexing in Postgres, when to add and when not to. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the conference organizers and I'm going to be your moderator for this webinar. I'm here with Ibra Ahmed, Senior Software Architect at Bracona, who has a vast experience in software design and development. Prior to joining Pocona, Ibra worked at Enterprise DB and he's contributed to the PostgreSQL community as well as other open source communities. He's a seasoned speaker and has given more than 15 Postgres talks in the last year alone all across the world. Um, these conferences that he's spoken at include Postgres Conference EU, Postgres Conference Asia, Postgres Conference New York, and Pocona Live. He's also authored multiple books on PostgreSQL. So welcome, Ibar. Uh, take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ibar Ahmed, and I'm currently working at Percona as a senior database architect. And prior to joining the Percona, I've worked in Enterprise DB. And in the PostgreSQL, it's been 16 years I've been using PostgreSQL and working with PostgreSQL. I totally have 21 years of software development experience, and I have uh, two big books on PostgreSQL. So today's topic is deep dive into PostgreSQL indexes. So today we will learn about the PostgreSQL indexes, how we can create that, and words internally have the information we have information about the indexes. So let's try. So before going to the actual PostgreSQL indexes, we have to we have to think what is the index actually. So for, for the clarity, I have an example here, which is a book. So when we are calling heap, what is the heap? So heap is a book. So we will, I will, I'm relating heap to the book. When when we are reading the book, like from first chapter, chapter is kind of a heap for us. And when you go at the end of the book, you can see the index of that book. So that index contains the pointer to the book. So when you are, want to search some word, you go to the index, you see the word and you can see the page number. So the page number is the pointer for the heap. So on that page number, you turn that page number and you can see the word on that page. So whenever, so in, in normally database, when, when I'm calling the heap, which is actually a table. And in this concept, I'm talking about the book and index is the last pages of the book where you have find the index of that book. So some key terms here, when, whenever I call tuples, it's actually a rows and rows are stored physically in physical file of the disk. So each table consists of physical file or files. It's a separate issue. One table can contain multiple files, but currently a table is data stored, a table to pull store on a disk file separately. So here I have created a table, create table foo with within a column ID and a Second column name. So if you go to go into the detail, we can see tuples and row or synonym. Whenever you use row or tuple, it is synonyms. The second thing, rel file node. Rel file node is a name of that file. Right? PG class is a catalog, catalog table. And rel file node is a column of PG class, which contains the file name of tables. So where rel name like foo. So what we are doing here, we are selecting a file name of table foo. And what is the file name? 16384. It's, it's a physical file on the disk. We just created a file, so we can go to the folder PG data, which is a data directory of PostgreSQL. So under the data directory, you can see 
you can see here, this is the database ID. And in data, database, you can see a table file. We already see this file is linked to the table foo. So, but its size is zero. Why? Because we just created that file. We have not inserted any data in that file. So what we learned that one table, one table is to store in a separate file on the disk. So another point, data has, does not have any order. So when you store data, like one, two, three, four, five, and when you select the data, it's not stored one, two, three. Initially it's stored in an order but it's not uh, necessarily because you can delete the data, you can reinsert the data, you update the data. It's, there is no order of data under that disk. So it's not necessary you get data in order or not order, it's totally unordered data. So tables and heap, select whole data. When you want to select the data, whole table, like select static from foo, you want to select the whole data, right? It makes sense. Select name from bar. It makes sense that you are running a sequential scan of the table. Yes. Because why? Because you want to read the whole table. So you are selecting first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row. So till end of the row, you need a each and every row and sequential scan makes sense here. So but when you want to select name where ID is equal to 5432, does sequential scan really make sense here? Let's go to the example, back to the example of book. When you are reading a book and you want to read book from first page to last page, so you definitely do that sequentially and that makes sense because you want to read first chapter, second chapter, third chapter, fourth chapter till the last chapter. So you are reading the book sequentially. But when I ask you to read some specific topic, so what will you do? Is it make sense to read the whole book to search for that topic? No, that doesn't make sense. Or doesn't make sense when you are, uh, so what will you do? You go to the index and search that word I have asked to read you. So. It doesn't make sense to sequentially scan a table if you don't want to read the whole table. You want a, some specific information. So, yeah. so how actually you are selecting a data? So here I and another example here: create table foo with an ID in, and name. So I have inserted two rows in there: one Alex, two Bob. So Postgres has some hidden columns. So one is CTID. So what I've done, I'm selecting CTID comma static from book, but foo. So what I'm doing here, I am selecting and one hidden column, which is a CTID and all the columns from foo. So all means ID and name. So here, what is CTID? CTID consists of two values. First value is the page number. The second value is the offset. So block and offset, block and offset, this information can take. So what we have here, Alex is on the ID and Alex is on the block zero and offset one, right? Page zero and which tuple? So when I said the offset, it's actually offset, but Right now, for this example, I call it a tuple. First tuple, second tuple. Don't confuse with the offset right now. So, uh, but we read here for CTID block number first, which is zero, which is zero, and one is the tuple. So we call it a tuple, not the offset. So mm, to be very clear here. So first block number and second tuple. So how to set data from the heap when we when we scan, what will we do? So we go for Alex zero, which is block number and offset one, which is the tuple one, Bob, which is ID two. And so 
we scan that table and go to that page and get the tuple. So this is this is how we are reading the data from the disk. Maybe you can see the colors. I change the color, but it's too small. So we have end up with the heap and there's concept of how to store the data, how we get the data. So we will start studying the indexes because we already I have explained that when you are reading a book, it's, it's, it's a huge task to read a book when you specifically need some information. So when you need a specific information, you need pointers. So indexes are entry pointer for the data. So you need some information to go to the index, you got that value from the index, you got the pointer from the index and you get the pointer and go to the back to the table and extract tuples from it. There are some exceptions there we'll study later on. So where you are not going to the heap, but it's, it's, it's a separate issue. I will cover that at the end of this presentation. The sole reason to have an index is a performance. So advantage, performance. Index is stored from separately from the table's main storage. This is the drawback because we require more space. Like if your table is one GB, maybe your index is 100 MB. So you need one GB and 100 MB extra. One GB is a table space and you need extra 100 MB. So it's a big drawback that you need a separate space. So if you are creating unnecessary indexes for your table, so you are eating your disk space. So you have to be careful that you have to save your disk space also. But the advantage is the performance. You will get the data quickly. So here in this example, explain. So maybe you, are, you already know that what is explained. So we have just uh, printing the plan here. Explain select name from bar where ID is equal to five, four, three, two. It's the same plan. It's a sequential scan on bar. You can see the sequential scan. Create index bar IDX on bar. So this is the syntax how to create an index. Create index bar, underscore IDX on bar or bar. So create index is the syntax bar underscore IDX is the name of the index on, on bar, bar is a table and ID is the column name. So explain, now we are explaining the same query. Explain text name from bar where ID is equal to five, four, three, two. So now you can see index scan is used, a bitmap index scan is used. So just forget about it, what is bitmap? Just see bar underscore IDX is used here. Bar underscore IDX is used and scan is index scan. And this one is sequential scan. So what is the advantage? I already told you there's an advantage in performance, the cost. Cost is the, the query is reduced. So don't be confused. It's not millisecond, it's not second, is the cost is an arbitrary value, but it the higher the value is the slow the query. So 40% improvement we got just creating one index. Why we don't have too much uh, because my table was not big enough and not have a complex queries and not using. So it's a simple example that where you are getting a 40% improvement here. So now we got the, we gone to the pair, we got to the point, sorry, that where we have learned index is necessary. It's give us the performance, it's necessary. So we will start creating an index now. Create index, IDX B3 on bar. So we have created an index. So I already told you that so stored in a physical disk, a separate file, like a table. It's own file or files as its own file. So we will run the same query, select rel file node from PG class, where rel name like IDX B3. Instead of using the name of table, I 
here I used index name. So I got the rel file node 16425. So we go to the PG data directory and you can see the file is here. So here you can see we have some data here because we have created on already created table which has a lot of data. So we created a index on that and we have data on in that file. So we studied that our every table has its own file, physical file, and index has its own physical file where all the index data will be stored. But we have learned that we have, we have created an index on a single column like this one. Create index bar underscore IDX on bar and ID is a column of table bar. So what is this? This is the index based on a single column. That's it. It's a simple one. We already seen that. But so post this, we have learned that we have created an index using a single column, but and drawback was we need a separate disk space. So here, when you are creating a data, it's it will lock the table. And because it needs to create an index for that. So Postgres provides a way where you can concurrently create an index without locking the table. So here, create index IDX B3 on bar using B3. So it's not concurrently created. So you can use a word concurrently, create index concurrently, same. Otherwise, everything is same. But the problem is the performance. It will take more time to complete, right? It will take the uh, the previous one where we have we are locking the table is 12 seconds and where we are not locking the table using a concurrently it take 23 seconds almost a double the time but advantage is it's not locking the table disadvantage is it will take time more time to create a table so express an index so what we have learned that we can create index using a single column so we can create a column with multiple columns, but in some condition, when we are learned that our queries are not based on columns, it's based on some expression, using some columns, but on some expression. So what we can do, we can create an index on that column, which is used in that expression. But in that case, we have to filter, we have to filter, or you can see the index is applied on that column only, not on that expression. So there is a chance, there is a way we can evaluate that this expression is most likely used in our queries. And we are choosing that query too often. So what we will do, we will create an index on that expression instead of using only the column name we use the whole expression so here we are selecting a data where lower name like text one which is any query like lower name important thing is lower name lower is a function and name is a column name and this makes it a expression so instead of creating a index on name we are creating index on lower function name and name in whole expression. So you can see we have created an index on whole expression. So now we are running the same query. We're running the same query. And you can see that index condition is this one. So the whole index condition become expression and the value. So it's more easy for the executor to run that. So second part, so maybe you, you can think that you can only use some uh, functions in the expression, but here I have some complex example. Explain static, static from bar where DT, DT is in a column, column which is a date column, plus interval two days. It's a complex expression. It's not only a function, I'm using interval plus days, this is an expression. So I am creating a index on the whole expression. So I can create an index on DT column only 
and then apply interval two days on that. But now I am creating an index. So in that case, Postgres will store this whole expression, evaluate that whole expression and store that data. So whenever I use this expedition, it's easy for Postgres to extract data for you. So previously we use a simple expression. Here we use a, a bit complex. So you can use, uh, but be careful when you are using this, you have to study your queries. What kind of expression you are using in the, your queries. And when you are using some expression in your query and which is consistent, and you are running that query quite only, then you can get that and make index on that. That's, that's much, much, much better performance than uh, creating an index on single column or multiple column. So what is in a partial index? I think I have told you in the initial slides that when you are creating an index, advantage is performance. What is the disadvantage? Disadvantage is the disk space. So if you are creating a lot of index on your machines, you're eating space on your disk. But there is another thing. If you have a huge table, huge table, and you are creating an index on that, so the index will also be very huge because it has, it has to store the pointers and values on that. And even if uh, that index contain multiple columns, it has to store that information. So what if, if I have a very huge table and very huge index, but when I study that my queries only hits first 1000 queue, 1000 rows only, but I need, or you can say 10% of the table or index. So is it necessary to create a complete index on that table? No. So on the left side here, you can see that. I have a created, I have a query like this where ID is less than 1000 and I have created an index on that, simple index on that. So you can see when I get the size of that index, it's 214 MB, 214 MB index size. But when I analyze that my queries always hit ID less than 1000 and it's 99% happening that I'm only curing less than 1000. So why, why I have created an index of ID, which is greater than 1000. But problem is I have to create a full index. Yes. No, there is a way where you can create an, a partial index. In this case, the Postgres will create an index for you where ID is less than 1000. So in that case, on the right side, you can clearly see I have create index IDX part on bar ID where ID is less than 1000. So in that case, my size is only 240 KB, but this, these both queries work almost with the same time. No difference of, I'm also hitting an index here. I'm also hitting on the left side. I'm also hitting on the right side. Index hits perfectly, but only advantage I'm getting here, the size. I'm getting a, a reduced size index here. But disadvantage, which is which I already figured out, out, the disadvantage is that if I hit the query, which is greater than 1000, this index will not hit because I have not created an index where ID is greater than 1000. I only created an index where ID is less than 1000. So what happened when I hit greater than 1000 uh, screenshot scan or some other index which is applied on greater than 1000 will hit. Here, the timing. So here is the, I have already answered what will happen when we query where ID is equal to greater than or simple index don't have. Okay, so, so what kind of an index we have here in the Postgres? B3 index is the one option it's called index methods. So B3 is the one of the, the main index of the Postgres flow. So supported operators less than 
when you have a less than operator when you have a less than equal to operator equal to operator greater than equal to greater than you can use the tray index so when we have created an index without using a word using it automatically create a b tree index b tree index is the default one so create index ids b tree on foo using b tree name is same create index idx b tree on foo name using b tree is optional so it automatically create a b tree index but you can when you want to create on some other kind of an index we will study later you can use you have to use using there so explain analyze select tree from foo where name is equal to some text so here you can see index using idx b3 own foo the index condition has been used so what is b3 it's a balance tree you want to read that you have to go to the wikipedia i have provided a link read is so what you can read how to access that and everything so b3 index uh example here i think i have uh, told uh, we, we have seen this picture before so create index foo id name so i we have id alex name L, uh, id 1 alex is a name two id name is bob and ct id is 01 and ct id is 2 i have created an index on name here so ct id is 0 and 1 for alex ct id 0 or 2 and bob and b3 b3 you have a searching bar how to search it will give a pointer we reach at the pointer and we will get the value of ct id that bob is stored on 0 and 1 we will get there so 0 and 1 will be get from the b3 and 0 1 we will go to the name and we will search for that and in the actual table we have stored the data on ordered data in, in the disk but in the in the index which is a b3 is stored as a b3 so we will use a b3 search algorithm to search the value name and we will get the position of C, uh, of that name and for the position we will go to the heap and extract the data from the heap with some exception we will study later one exception is there so what what we are doing here when we have created an index b3 index it stored the data in the b3 form so when we ask for the search the data alex we go to the b3 and using a b3 search algorithm we search the value of alex we search and got the pointer from there we go to the heap which and extract that tuple directly so hash index what is an hash index hash index only handles it actually it's create a hash for the value which we are creating the handle so when we are storing the b3 it stored the data in a b3 form when we are creating our index using a hash that it creates a hash for that value so we already know the hash only work for the equality operators but we cannot because we cannot do greater than on hash because hash is a random value so we cannot predict that this value is greater than it so if you have a name foo or name bar and you have calculated a hash for foo and bar it's kind some kind of random values so it's not at random but it's, it's not uh, ordered value so you can put greater than and less than on that so it just you can equate that value so it's used for equal operator equality operator so before for the for the b tree we have used using b tree here we are using using hash it's compulsory because if you don't use using hash it will create a b tree index so for using explicitly creating a hash you have explicitly specified using hash so it will create as a hash index for you so you can see in the query idx hash is a new hash for you hash index and it's used here so next if you see i have uh, explained my, uh, my table here bar so you can see we have a uh, uh, it's a it's a, it's a it's a typo here so sorry id hash is a hash and name 
which is just a typo. I will correct that. IDX hash is a hash index. So Postgres have, has an, another type of an index. It's a bin, block range index. I think it's, is it, is it not enough to have a hash index and a B3 index? Most of the time, it fulfills your requirement. But there is a, there, are, there is a chance of improvement there. Like if you have information which have correlation with the physical location of your table, explain it. If you have a column which has some correlation with the physical storage of your table, like I'm storing the information from January 2020, February 2020, March 2020, April, May, June, July, August, September, and continues. So, and I'm not deleting that information, I'm just adding, inserting that information. So it has correlation with the physical location on the table. Why? Because it stores sequentially. I'm not talking about the sequential in, in other time. It's a sequential data. So if you're storing data in the physical location, so when I am calculating, I can calculate that this from here to December, this physical location contain the data of that table. So serial information, like I'm storing a data serially, like serial number one, two, three, four, five, six, no gap and no uh, information break. And we are not going to the back the serial number uh, 100, 100, and there is no serial number 99 again. So it expanding the serial numbers. So this is a physical correlation of your column with the physical disk. In that case, you already know that uh, you have that kind of information. You can optimize your space and everything. So you can use a brain index. So how you can use a brain index? You can create index ideas on table on use this table using brain like you have done with the hash table. So you can create a brain index. So what brain index store? Brain index hash, tab, hash index store hash values. B3 index stores CTID and values and something like that and whole B3. And what brain index store? It stored a page number and the minimum value of the column and the maximum value of the column. That's it. You know this page contain minimum value of this column and maximum value volume of this column. Using three integer or big integer or anything, you can get the whole information of that page. So here is an example. Here I have done a sequential scan. So on the left side, so you can see the 7397 millisecond, seven seconds. And here I have used a BRIN index. Have you noticed that only 4.2 millisecond spend on that query? Why? Because I have used a brain index and I have a physical correlation of my column with the disk because DT, I'm appending a dates one by one, one by one. I'm not going back to the dates. So Postgres knows that this page number contain from this date to this date. So it, it don't need to go to the each and every tuple to see the values. It already has that information that this page contains this date to this date. So it has the information of in between all the values. So it, it's not reading all the values. So that's why it's really quick. But the problem is if you break that concept to physical correlation, it won't work. So it's sure you have to read carefully that your data is physical correlated with the disk. So then you can use it. You can have a really good performance here. So other than the performance, I have created a three index here. Create index B3 using B3, hash and brain. And you can see size, hash, hash to more space, B3 to less space. And you can see it's, it's, uh, it's only a 42 kilobytes. And it's above a 21 MB or 48 and hash took a 48 MB 
and it's 48, I think 48 uh, in KB also 48 MB, 21 MB and 48 KB of brain index. So it's, it's, it's really fast. And sorry, fast and took really less space. So another index, which is generalized inverted index. We have already studied three indexes before. So one more index, which is generalized inverted index. So then is to handle where we need to come index a composite value. What is a composite value? So I will give an example here. Like I have another document, a JSON B document. So here select distinct name DT from bar where limit is equal to five. And I want to select a value where name is equal to Alex. Is there a way to create an index on, on, on this? So only way I can create a bin, brain, uh, B tree, hash index to create an index on name or DT. That's it. There is no way I can create an index inside that values are the composite values. So here comes the gene index. So I have a create an index create index it uh, idx underscore jn on bar using jn name. So when I have a query here, I put in a query, the name contain name is equal to colon Alex and query plan without, without the index is sequential scan on bar. You can see the time is one second. So on the right side, if you see, we have used a uh, index bar IDX gene and index bar, you can see index IDX gene is used here. You can see that. And time is 4715, almost half the time of the sequential scan. So in the, in the document for the composite values, you can use as use a gene index. Another index which is generalized search tree, it is uh, actually it is a framework. It is a is also a tree structured access method. It is indexing framework used for indexes the complex data types. What is the complex data types? You find a point within the box. No other index can do that. Use for the full text search using within the int array. So we have covered B3 hash been brain, gen, and js. So B3 used for the index for most of the queries and different data types. So almost you covered almost you covered everything in the B3, but in some condition you need hash, which is used for the equality operators and for the faster speed and low disk usage, and you have some sequential data correlated with the disk. You can use the brain. Gen used for document and other is JIS used for full text search. So when I was telling you about the information that there are some exceptions. When you are reading information from index. So what is an index? So let's suppose I said to you, go to the index in the book and count the word Alex. So there are two ways to do that. One way you go to the end of the index and search the word Alex in the index and get the pointer there and go back to your book and read that book and search the word index, uh, read the word index and count it. And there is another way, which is a faster way. When I ask to count the word Alex, you go to the end of the book and search the value Alex and see how many pages it, the word contain Alex and count that and give that information. Go back to, don't go back to the heap. This is called index only scan. Means when you are looking something from the index and you are hitting the index and your all the columns are present in your query are part of that index that you are curing some values and your calls and your 
target list and your columns are all part of that index, query will not touch the heap. It will directly give you the values from the index. So it's not reading the pointer of heap and reading the data from heap. It's directly reading the data from index and give it to you. So it's a performance feature. So when you are hitting index only, you get better from performance. Like if you are hitting a sequential scan on heap, it's a low slow. If you are hitting index scan, it's far. Or when you are hitting index only scan, but the only condition is your all columns call should be in that index. So here is the query. So select ID name from this table and this table. I have another three column ID name and DT. Another column from bar where ID is equal to greater than this. I have an index on ID and name. And in the first query, you can see I have selecting three columns. One ID name two DT three. And I have one index on ID and name only. So when I query the table, it hits index. Which one? Index scan using IDX. Okay. In the second query, I am selecting ID name from bar where ID is equal to this and this. So ID is present in a, in a index. Name is present in an index. ID is present in index. ID is present in index. So all the columns are present in index. So Postgres that will directly read the information from index and give it to you. So here index only scan hits. When you are hitting all the column in the index, you're getting all the information from the index. All right. So I think it's clear. So I, I wrote some queries because people were asking from that we need some queries that how to detect a duplicate index in or something like that. So these are the queries. So you can see I have wrote a queries. If you run this query, you can see index key one, one, two column name. And at the end, you can see rel name bar index cam two and index set method is B3. So you have uh, two indexes on B3 with this on the same index key. So index key is the column name. So you have one column name index, but with a different name. You can create uh, with a different name using same column and same value. So what is the use of that? You are wasting a space. So you have uh, two index on same column on same table with different names. If you run this query, it will give you the information that this table has two indexes on same column. You can write your own queries where your one column can hit multiple indexes and you can detect it. Here, I am just uh, detecting where your in, in, you have a separate index on that column. But if this index is another part of another index, then it's okay. Maybe you have you want to use that sometimes not, but you can use that. But here it's, it's completely unnecessary to have a single index with the same key on the same table with different name. So here is the query. Some people ask if I want to know what kind of operator can be used with which index access method. So in this query, just place the AM name. So if you write here B3 or hash, so it will give you the operator's name, like equal to operator, greater than, less than operator name, that these operator are supported with this index. So here I just, because uh, Jenna just has a smaller uh, list, so I just paste uh, information about it here. So index stats, so PG stat statement and PG stat user index, some, has some information so you can combine them or you can query them to get some information from them that about the indexes. Index stats. Why is coming going back? Unused indexes. So here I'm querying PG stat user indexes. So 
after long waited time, I see after four days, five days, one month, I just query my stats, statistics and see, I have created some index one month ago or some time ago and that index never hit by my query. I mean, taking GBs of space. Oh, why? Why I have that index, which I am not using since months and months still there and wasting my disk space. There are two problem can be here. One problem, your index is not hitting because of the problem in the query. The second problem, you have created an unused index. So both can be the problem. Your query is wrong. Your index creation is wrong or you have created an unused index. So fix your problem. If your ID scan is zero, I mean it was never been scanned. The index never been used. So drop that index, fix your queries to use this uh, index or fix that index. Otherwise there is no use of index to have here. I think covered a lot of thing with a short span of time. I think I took 50 to 53 minutes all I need. So I have, we have some minutes for the questions. Hi, yes. Um, we've gotten a ton of questions. Um, and actually I got to applaud everybody who um, was on the line because people have been going out of their way to answer questions in the moment. So um, great job, y'all. So I've pulled a few few questions. Um, the first question um, I have here is how do I know when to use the default B tree and when to use hash? Uh, I was quite clear about that. When you are you want to query greater than equal to and less than operator. Like if you have ID is greater than 10, then you cannot use the hash index because hash will not work for the greater than and less than. If you want to use Greater than less than, you have to use B3. If you want to use an equality operators, like equal to, a name is equal to this, value is equal, ID is equal to this, then you can use the hash index. But B3 can be used anywhere, even for the equality operators. But hash is only for equality operators. How do you build both a hash index and another B3 index by using a B3 as the underlying data structure? Actually, it's two separate things because uh, when you are creating an index, it's a separate thing. You are creating an index of B3 and you are creating an index with the hash. You are hashing the web that value. And if you want to hash that value and then again, you want to use a B3, it's not possible because right now, I, I don't know about that. But right now you have two, two separate options that you can create a B3 or you can create a hash. Other than we don't have an option as far as I know. What is a generalized inverted index? And it is, I said that generalized inverted index when you want to create an index on composite value. A composite value, what is the composite value? The composite value of value contain a multiple values. It's not a simple one, like a document. So like you have on a column, which is name. So name can be Alex, Bob, something like that. But what is a document? So if you go see this document, it's not simple. It's a composite value. Like this document, which I name is a name. You can see name, Alex, phone number, this. So one column contain two values. Name is equal to Alex, phone is equal to 333, 222, and, three, and phone again contain three values. So this is the composite values. So when um, for the composite value, you want to create an index, you have to create an agent index. Great. Um, why would PostgreSQL allow two indexes on the same column? Is there a use case? I don't know. Why? I think I will ask why they are allowing it to create the same index. I don't know because, but at least we can create that same index on same column. But uh, for this uh, question, this is a good question actually. I will ask uh, some, somebody that who is involved in the create, 
developing the indexes or something. Why it's allowing that? But at least in this version, it's uh, you can do that. But I will ask that person. Great. Two more questions here. How do you easily find which index is corrupted? Uh, two way. I said that. One is your brain. Yeah, you have to create an index. You have created perfectly according to your data. Second thing, you have to see your statistics. That how many times you have hit your index. Second. Third, you have to see manually the performance of your index. That you can create a different index and you can see the performance. If you are getting the performance, that's index is good. And because it's all, all three are important because if you are creating index according to your data, it will give you the benefit. And you are testing your uh, index that it's giving the performance is also important. And third important thing that when you are running uh, after some time you see that your index are not hitting, that is that might be some problem with your query or indexes. That's important thing. I have shown that uh, if you go here, so if you see here that you have an index and your index can is zero or even four or six, 10 or very less time you are hitting your index. And most of the time you are not hitting on the index. And even you can write this kind of you know, more queries that you are always hitting the heap scan, you are not hitting the indexes. So you can write your own queries. These queries are just an example. So uh, I have uh, in a blog post. Uh, you can you can go to the Percona blogs where I have write nine most used queries to detect your problems and anything with the indexes. So that nine or 10 queries, complex queries. So when you run that queries, it will give you some information about your indexes. So just go to my blog post and you can see that. Okay, and our last question here. Will new values get indexed in a partial index if they meet the condition or will only existing values get indexed? The values less than that where condition will be indexed and value greater than that or not fit, uh, not fulfilling that condition will not be indexed. That's the answer. The value within that expression will index and value which is not within that expression will not be indexed. After, even after that, uh, it will add it. Okay, well, those are all the questions I, I've pulled. Um, Neil is currently asking, where can I find the blog mentioned by Ebrar? I also search it because here it is. Okay, great. Oh, thank you for, for putting that in the chat. So um, with that, Ibra, I want to thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Um, to all of our attendees and participants, thank you so much for spending your, you know, mornings, evenings, or afternoons with us. Um, and I hope everyone stays uh, safe and healthy, and I hope to see you on the next webinar. So cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Bye.